Hello, my name is Anna. I'm a horticulturalist and I live in Sussex and I make videos on horticulture, gardening, wood carving, spoon carving, craft, like I do it all. Today I just wanted to show you my basic toolkit. I use this every day for gardening. I used it as a student. I used it when I was volunteering. I would want all these tools if I was a home gardener or a hobby gardener. Anyway, I'll run through the tools. You'll notice that lots of them are brand names. That's purely just because I've gone for quality because I want them to last a really, really long time and I use them every single day. However, if you're just starting out and you just want to get involved in horticulture, don't go for a brand name. Just go for a spade or a fork because you're not going to lose out. They're all pretty much average out across the board. And as long as it's not made of just like plastic and it has a bit of substance to it, you should be absolutely fine. So don't worry about brand names and about costing. My tools are more on the expensive side. So just choose what you can afford. The ones I'm recommending aren't sponsored or anything like that. I just really like them. So yeah, I'll get started. So first up, obviously a broom, a janky ass broom of that. You need a broom, especially one that has a bit of a wire bristle. Full stop, get a broom. After that, you're gonna need leaf. I don't know what these are called, leaf claws maybe? I have no idea. Uh, they're just two plastic things that you can put your hand through. I never put my hand through, don't trust it, can never get it back out. And they've just got teeth on this side and a flat side this side, and you just use it to pick up the leaves or uh, mud that you've raked and put it into a truck. I full on think these are some of the best things in gardening. Without one of these, you'll be scratching around for ages. They're great with a wheelbarrow as well. You need both, like honestly. I use this. This is probably my most used tool, minus my secateurs and my gardening gloves. This is absolutely fantastic. I fully rate these. Next up, obviously a hoe. Mine is meant to have square edges. At one stage it did, uh, but I use it for weeding paving and things like that. This is Spear and Jackson. It's obviously quite long. I think these are great. I do recommend Wolfgarten more though because they have interchangeable heads and you can get different things to fix to these. But as a standard hoe, this is really, really good. You need a hoe. I swear if YouTube rates this for bad language because I said hoe, I'm gonna be mad. But obviously next, a garden fork. This is also Spear and Jackson. I would get a T handle next time, not a D handle. I think you're better able to get an angle and a twist on a T handle. But yeah, this is just your standard fork. I need a new one as well because you can see my my prongs are out of line, but yeah, fantastic. Next up, spade, shovel. This is the golden shovel from Nowaki. It's the larger one. It's great, it's absolutely great. You can definitely get more affordable ones on the market or go straight to Elephant, which is the brand, and they can hook you up with one that's a little bit less, because obviously they are quite expensive, or ask for it for Christmas, that's another great option. Um, but this angle, like the grave digging spade, my grand calls it, is, perfect and you can get one that's a bit smaller than this obviously if you need it to be lighter or doing smaller work occasionally you can dig out so many stumps so much stuff with it i barely ever 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 use a square edge spade anymore in fact i don't even keep it in my van day today it has to be a really specific reason for me to want and use it if you have both keep both obviously don't throw one away but yeah fully rate these ones with the tipped ends next up uh just some shears I do have posher shears, like nicer ones, uh, but these have got me through a couple of really good years. <laughs> Twin, <laughs> not spawn, but I'm gonna dress like my own shears. <laughs> what the heck? So yeah, really rate these. You can retwist this when the blade starts to loosen up. Obviously they need to be sharpened and these telescopic uh, shears, so you can extend them for hard to reach areas. These are great for general shearing day to day. I really like these. Obviously Spear and Jackson again because of the red and blue, which I promise I'm not spawn, just a wannabe. And again, matching um, Spear and Jackson loppers. These are great as well. And they also extend so you can reach without having to get a ladder, which honestly, when you're parked in a lay by, you walk to a client's house for about two minutes and you think, I've got to get my ladder out of the van. And there's nothing more that I hesitate on with gardening is having to get my ladder in and out. It's actually super easy, but that's the thought of it. Yeah, really recommend these, these loppers and they're really, really sharp. All my tools I've had for like five or six years now. So they've lasted a really long time. Continuing the theme, rake. Spear and Jackson, once again. I think these are just very accessible to buy. They're in loads of garden centers and they're quite good. They're quite a good price for what they are. Uh, metal rake, self-explanatory. I'd buy this before leaf rake, but you do need both. 
preferably, but go for a metal one first if you can't afford both. I find it's just way more practical to have a metal one and you can also dethatch lawns with these. You can get away with a metal rake for almost everything. I'm still gonna rake a leaf rake. These are great. This one's actually lost all its little prangs, prongs. Look how small that is. It's also been run over like 30 times. For some reason, it's just absolutely invisible and I hit it with my van all the time. And also I leave it in really weird places and then I, yeah, it's been run over by so many people, honestly. It's a miracle it survived this long, but if you want a hard wearing rake, be in queue because <laughs> this one's been through it. Quite obviously, secateurs. These are quite bougie ones, I have to say. I do have Felcos as well, but they're in my pocket, in my trousers at home because I can never, I never ever take my secateurs out my pocket unless it's to clean them and oil them. But these are great, definitely way more affordable versions. If you're working long term and you like the look of these, they're from Nowaki. They are really, really good and obviously really easy to find because they're red and white. And so are Felcos, they are red also. So they're really easy to find. You don't often lose them. I think I've lost my Felcos once and I've had them six years. You can also send Felcos back to be um, up, like sharpened and cared for for about £25 I think and they come back really quickly and they come back super sharp. I really recommend decent pair of secateurs because they're easier to keep things sharp but obviously if it is too much of an outright expense just buy a couple of nice ones that fit in your hand well go and try some when we're out of lockdown find the one that you can fit in your hand well that you like to use. Okay just quick here is a couple of tools I use for weeding so we've got the wolf garden just hook tool this is absolutely fantastic if you're going to get one thing for weeding don't make it a trowel make it one of these because it really hooks around the roots i've also got a herbaceous saw i think this is from Nowaki as well this is really really good in winter and spring if you're chopping down perennials like a lot because it hurts your hands so much to use secateurs this comes in clutch and we've got this little hand hoe this is great for weeding containers i really really enjoy using this I definitely say it's a lot sharper than a normal hoe so be careful with it because it's got quite a point to it then i've just got some silky saws this big one and the little pocket boy this one i definitely recommend just day to day the only reason i need a big one is for apple tree pruning and things but day to day this little pocket boy is absolutely ace it's also raining so it's been in the rain so it looks a bit nasty but yeah fully rate this one then obviously for last final bits of the cute kit, like the small one, is this bulb planter, self-explanatory. I would get one if you have a bad back or bad knees, I'd definitely get one that's like on a stick that's more like a spade because it is a lot of like ab work to try and get the bulb planter in the ground, twist it, pull it out and put a bulb in and put it back in again. And then obviously twine. And this has been carried away by so many dogs, uh, which I, is so funny. They always grab it. They just gravitate towards it. I think they think it's an animal or something. Anyway, it's great. Yeah, definitely need twine for absolutely everything. Get yourself some twine. And it's so inexpensive and it really saves having to go up to a customer and be like, you look, I haven't got my twine. Do you mind if I borrow some? If you turn up with twine, it just looks a bit better, looks a bit more professional. It saves you so much time and effort and worry and energy thinking, how am I gonna tie up this rose? How am I gonna stake this? A plant could fall over at any minute and it needs tying up. So always have twine on you. This is nut seen by the way, and obviously nut seen are the rulers of the twine world, but yeah, they do it in garden centers. And now we're onto sort of the more specific niche tools that you don't necessarily need day to day, but I find really handy to have and would really recommend you buying them if you can in the long term. If you can't straight out afford it straight away, don't worry about it. You can use alternatives for these things. The first up is the edging spade, the half moon. This is Bulldog, who are fantastic. And this has the T handle that I was talking about that gives you the sort of leverage and I really like tea handles and it's made of wood which is a lot more comfortable on your hands. This is a really good weight and Bulldog is such a good tool maker. This obviously the alternative for this is just a square edge spade so don't necessarily, I find these absolutely fantastic and they give you the right depth but if you can't afford one a square edge spade is perfectly fine. I've also got a metal rake for raking and leveling soil or gravel and I have absolutely no idea on earth where this is from label's gone had it years absolutely fantastic and obviously the alternative to this is a metal rake which won't give you such a good job and won't knock out the lumps and bumps because that's what these thicker teeth are for but in a pinch a metal rake is okay 
bougier shears. These are much bougier. These are Milwaukee as well, as you can see. And they are absolutely, absolutely fantastic. If you're interested in topiary or anything, these are great basic shears to get straight away. They hold their edge for so long. They're so easy to sharpen. They're so easy to wipe clean at the end so you don't pass on diseases, because obviously, Boxus. I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it. Boxus is a hot topic at the moment and you don't want to spread on blight etc from that so these are absolutely great and obviously the shears I suggested in the beginning the shears I suggested in the beginning of this video are good for universal use so buy those first but then if you want to specialize into topiary or you end up working in gardens or planting lots of box like you <laughs> holly balls, spheres, etc. These are brilliant. We've also got, I'm gonna have to stand a bit back for this, is the tree pruner, the pole pruner. This obviously all unwinds this orange cable, but I'm not doing it. And this also extends. If I do this, I hope I won't cut my hand by accident, but there we go. You can just see it's like a pair of secateurs on the end of a really long pole and the pole will extend and extend and you can get even further reaching up than you can with your telescopic loppers. So the, this is great, but once I don't use this day to day. Obviously, finally, is if you're cutting lots of hedges, you need a hedge trimmer. This is the Still HLA65. Yes, I had to read the side because I've got a few still battery powered pieces of kit. This is the one I would recommend tenfold. You can see the blade there. Um, it folds into this tiny, tiny little thing, smaller than my pruner, that's for sure. And you can set it to most angles. Super, super, super long battery life. I've got the 300. Last age, would recommend one on like the telescopic one, this one, way more than the short handle one. I also have that one as well. It's great for a hobby gardener or someone who has one hedge or two hedges. They know they're gonna cut and they have a ladder. I have a lot of hedges that I have to reach up and cut. Uh, it gets a bit scary, but you can adjust it. <laughs> you can adjust it in different levels so you can cut the top of the hedge really easily and the sides of the hedge really easily. And it's so lightweight that you don't have to worry about a bad back or heavy arms. Heavy arms, you know what I mean? Like when your arms go a bit tingly because you've been holding something heavy for so long, maybe that's just me and slightly worrying. But if you're going to use that, I'd really recommend getting yourself a helmet, ear defenders, you don't necessarily have to use such a substantial helmet. You can have just goggles and ear defenders. I just tend to shove this on because you get loads of stuff scratching the back of your head and in your hair and in your eyes and it's just horrific. So that's my toolkit, my recommendations. I don't think I missed anything out except for my tripod ladder and I'll insert a picture maybe here if I ever learn how to insert a picture here. I'm just gonna say it glamorously and then if there's a picture there, look at it. And if there isn't, just click the link below in the description. <laughs> but yeah, I have a Nawaki tripod ladder. Uh, henchmen also sell them. Henchmen are fantastic because they have adjustable feet, but Nawaki is just as good. They make you feel so much safer. And my granny of all people is so, so jealous that I have a tripod ladder and you don't wibble wobble about and you don't have to worry about falling and you feel so, so safe and it's adjustable. So if you're gonna get a ladder, get a tripod ladder for your safety and for everyone's peace of mind. Like this video if you liked it and let me know what you guys would like to see in the future. All of these videos I've done now and another one coming up are suggestions from people and it's really, really useful and helpful to actually give you information that you want. So just let me know. I hope everyone's gonna enjoy this video and I'll see you guys next time.